The shortest edge paths node is a new geometry node coming to Blender 3.3, and if you've seen what people are making with it, then you'll understand just how much potential it has. So you need to be using version 3.3 at least to have access to this node. I'll put a link to where you can download it, or you can use the Blender launcher in the description to always stay up to date. So let's start by adding in a plane with Shift A, and then we can go up to geometry nodes, add a new node tree, and we need to subdivide our plane a little bit. So tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and I'll just change this value right here to something a little higher, like 29. And then we can add the edge paths to curve node, and it'll delete everything until we, you know, put something in these sockets so we can add the shortest edge paths node also. Plug in the next vertex index right there. And now we need to specify an end vertex. So what I'm gonna do is bring in an index node right here, and we're going to bring in a compare node change this to integer and change this to equal and plug the index in and plug this into end vertex. So now what this is doing is looking at all of the points and finding the index with a value of zero right here. So if we change this, you can see it'll move around like that. And we can also add a trim curve node and change the start to see where they're actually all going to like that. We didn't specify any start vertices. So basically what it's doing is starting at every single vertex and they're all branching towards the one point that we specify like that now to turn this into a maze all we have to do is put a random value right here and the edge cost and now we have a maze that's all it takes edge cost is a confusing concept but basically each edge is assigned a value and whichever value is smaller is seen as the shorter path by default they all have the same value so it's just going to draw a straight line to the endpoint that we specify. But basically when we plug in a random value, we're starting with a point and it's checking all of the edges it's connected to and you know, seeing whichever one has the shortest value. And then, oh, this one does, so it goes there. And then it's checking again. Um, and you know, then it finds the shortest value again and it just keeps going like that. If you wanna use this node to find the shortest route through uneven terrain, then you can use this setup right here and plug it into the edge cost. We aren't going to do this today, but you can check out these videos that use this method. So right now, everything is branching towards one single point. If we want to add more than one point, and there are a few ways, one way is to just change this equal to less than. And so now every index with a value that's less than this number will show up. So right now, this should be the same. It's all going to that one point, but we can turn it up. And now it's branching from two points. And to make mazes that are actually solvable, I like to add two points like this because these branches are never going to touch each other. So we know that we'll be able to go from like this edge to this edge like that. And you can turn this up however high you want really. And now we have like four corners. We can also turn this back to equal. And if we want, we can choose two index values right here. And we just have to use a Boolean math. And instead of setting this to and, we have to choose or like that, and now we can you know, specify whatever two we want. It'll be a little more clear if we make these smaller, but we can specify whatever two points we want like that. You know, So if we want it somewhere in the middle, that's how we, we can do it. And since we're using a mesh and we actually have points that we can reference, we can also use vertex groups. So we can just unplug this and plug in one of the empty sockets from the group input like that. And now we can tab into edit mode, go over here to object data properties and add a new vertex group. And we can choose whatever points we want. I'll choose two, one on either end and hit assign like that. Now we need to go over to the modifiers right here, click this button, it'll clear it, and then click it again, and it'll let us choose our vertex group right here. And now the two points that we selected are the ones that we're you know, growing from like that. Let's give this a little thickness so we can see it a little better. We can add in a curve to mesh. And for the profile curve, I'm going to add in a quadrilateral right here. And we need to make this way smaller. I'll set it to 0 0.01. We're going to hit fill caps. And they're all round, so we're going to add a set shade smooth and make sure that is turned off. But it's not going to work if we use another shape, like if we just bring in a grid like this and plug that in. Um, we don't have any vertex groups there. So for that, I will still use this setup right here. What's nice about using a grid in geometry nodes is you can set it to whatever resolution you want like that, which is pretty nice. But we're using a 3D program, so we don't have to keep using flat objects. We could also use something like a cube and just turn it up a little bit. 
and we'll have this kind of like maze cube. And it's a little hard to understand like the depth, it gets pretty noisy. So if you want, you could also join the geometry right here with the cube like that. So there's like a maze on top of the cube. Let's try a different shape. So instead of a cube, we could also use like an icosphere. I'll plug this into both slots and turn this up a little bit like that. And if we look at our spreadsheet, you can see we have like a lot of points right now. We have 226,000. And if we look really close, you can see that a lot of them are kind of overlapping like that. So we can clear this up by merging some of these points together with a merge by distance node. If we put it right here afterward, it will make it go down to 37,000. But a way that works even better is by turning the curve to a mesh before. Then we have to turn it back into a curve like that. And in between, we can merge the distance. And now we'll have even fewer, only at 19,000. So you definitely have to be careful using this because you'll generate a lot of geometry like really quickly. But there are actually some interesting things you can do with all of these overlapping points. Let's uh, delete this join geometry right there. Make sure this is plugged in so we only have these paths now. And let's add a set position node right here. And we'll grab a spline parameter node. And now we have access to like how long each of these lines is. And if we plug it in here, it'll, you know, kind of explode <laughs> like crazy. What I like to do is instead of plugging this in directly, I like to multiply it by the normal of our mesh right here. So we can use a capture attribute and bring in the normal. Make sure this is set to vector so that it matches our normal. Plug it in and we can grab a vector math node, change this to multiply and plug in the attribute right here. And now we can plug in our factor or our length and plug it into the offset. And now it'll push outward instead of, you know, in one direction. And we can add another math node right here to play with like how strong it is. Set this to multiply like that. So you can push it in or out. If you set it to length, it's going to pay attention to how long each curve is. And the ones that are longer, it's going to push out even more. And it still works with the trim curve node. So you can get some really cool animations like that. My favorite effect is plugging in the factor and setting this to negative one. And when you do that, everything branches out from like a center point like that. We can use the spline parameter to add some noise to this also. So let's make some room and add another set position right after. We'll bring in a noise texture and we can plug the color in directly, but it's not really going to give us the, uh, the effect that we want. So we need to add in another vector math node. I'll subtract this by 0.5 and then we can add in another one set to scale or multiply. Either one works. This will let us change like the noise strength basically. And to control the strength right here, we can just plug the factor in like that. But I want to flip this around because right now the center is being distorted the most and the outside is not. So let's bring in a map range right here and we can just swap the one and the zero. We can use the two max for our strength right here. So this is going to look a lot smoother and better if we resample it. So I'll add a resample curve node right here that and I'll set this to length and I'll also make the quadrilateral oh, yeah. I'll also make our quadrilateral quite a bit thinner so 0 0.005 maybe like that so now at the center it'll be pretty smooth and the further they go the more distorted they'll get like that and for extra points you can change this to 4d and move this value right here to get it to animate or plug in a scene time node plug in the seconds right here and maybe turn the scale down quite a bit, turn this up a little higher, and now it'll animate automatically like this. This is one of the more confusing nodes, and I'm still learning about it, so I'll probably make more videos about it in the future. Leave a comment if you have any other interesting uses for it, and if you want the files that I make in my videos, you can get them on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.